to CCBC. We are a Christ-loving and Bible-believing community of people purposely placed by the Almighty in the heart of the nation with the nations at heart. We want to help you become the person God made you to be. So no matter where you are in your journey, you are invited to discover your purpose and live it out at CCBC. Tuning in to our worship services through Facebook or YouTube? That's great! What's even greater is that we have created a platform for you so that you can maximize your digital connection and experience of CCBC's online worship services at home. This is live.ccbc.ph You only need to go to a web browser through your phone or desktop and type in live.ccbc.ph Within this page, you won't just be able to engage with a life-changing community through chat, rather you can also read your Bible, review sermon notes, share quotes from the speaker, ask for a private prayer chat, and financially support the church, all in one platform. The next time you tune in, go to our website at live.ccbc.ph and bring the CCBC experience to your home. As we journey this new theme series entitled Emerge, we will discover how it is to arise in you in the Lord. To assist us in pursuing this call, we invite you to connect with the church in these different venues. Let us walk towards emerging into God-worshipping and community-changing individuals by engaging and growing with these communities. Just visit these Facebook pages to stay updated with their latest programs and events. kids emerge into God-fearing and values-driven children by joining our Kids Ministry Sunday School classes after this online service. Our classes are open for children ages 4 to 13 years old. one with God and our missionaries in serving the nations. To give by faith through the mission's faith promise, please inform us by sending an email to giving at ccbc.ph. Know that God is honored when we sow into His kingdom. Here at CCBC, giving to the Lord is an act of worship. It is a way of thanking God for all that He has provided in our lives. It is also supporting the work that God is doing in the community and around the world. Giving online is the easiest and best way to give. 
You can give anytime, anywhere, online through BDO, BPI, Metrobank, or visit ccbc.ph slash giving for more details. You can also give in person at our designated offering boxes located at the main entrance of CCBC at 111 West Avenue, Quezon City. Tuning in to our worship services through Facebook or YouTube? That's great! What's even greater is that we have created a platform for you so that you can maximize your digital connection and experience of CCBC's online worship services at home. This is live.ccbc.ph You only need to go to a web browser through your phone or desktop and type in live.ccbc.ph Within this page, you won't just be able to engage with a life-changing community through chat, rather you can also read your Bible, review sermon notes, share quotes from the speaker, ask for a private prayer chat, and financially support the church, all in one platform. The next time you tune in, go to our website at live.ccbc.ph and bring the CCBC experience to your home. As we journey this new theme series entitled Emerge, we will discover how it is to arise in you in the Lord. To assist us in pursuing this call, we invite you to connect with the church in these different venues. Let us walk towards emerging into God-worshipping and community-changing individuals by engaging and growing with these communities. Just visit these Facebook pages to stay updated with their latest programs and events. Let our kids emerge into God-fearing and values-driven children by joining our Kids Ministry Sunday School classes after this online service. Our classes are open for children ages 4 to 13 years old. Good morning. 
and welcome to CCBC's online worship service. How are you today? Marahil marami sa atin ay may mga bitbit pang isip na talalahanin sa mga puso ngayon. We all know how the trials and sufferings have not ended. And so we are here to encourage you with a beautiful truth about God as we come to worship. Allow me to read to you the verse from Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. This is God, the one who rules over all things, the Father is over us. He is the God whom we we are going to put our eyes on, and we pray that we will fully understand and embrace this truth as we walk further into the Holy of Holies through our singing, listening to His Word, and responding. Come behold the works of the Lord. Let us be still and know that He is God. Let us exalt Him together. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. CCBC, let us worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy.
Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Lord, as we rejoice in you, we continue to declare that our hope is anchored truly on Christ alone. Lamentations 3.24 says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Church, we stand amazed knowing that God's love knows no end. And that whatever trials come our way, we will emerge victorious knowing that God is with us. Our hope and our strength is anchored on Christ and Christ alone. And Lord, we are grateful that we can call you our cornerstone, our solid rock, and our God. Church, let's continue to worship him this morning as we sing. Shall ever be. 
how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Let us stay in an attitude of friendship in prayer. Father, with mercy and grace, will you receive our hearts, Christ? We grieve with those who have been affected by the pandemic and the recent calamities. For those who are financially struggling, for those who have lost a loved one, for those down with sickness, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally. We grieve for those who experience injustice, for those who are affected by the wrongdoings of other people. Will you open our eyes to see you, Lord? Will you open our ears so we may hear you as we cry? When we are hungry, when we fear, when we feel overwhelmed with our emotions and the worldly pressures. Father, will you open our hearts to your truth? Forgive us if we have spent so much time thinking planning and worrying about our lives. Will you help us, Lord, to trust you when everything is a blur? Will you direct our steps, O oh God? Teach us, Lord, how to find peace in you each day. Give us the peace that we cannot produce on our own, but the peace that surpasses all understanding and knows that you are with us and you love us. Will you take over us Strengthen us, give us wisdom, and help us make it through until we emerge as gold in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and Victor, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for joining us today on the third Sunday of August. And we're excited as we uh, now continue in this new theme that we have for this next 12 months, starting August up to July next year. Our theme, Emerge. Wow, I'm so excited about this. And as we saw our theme verse from Job, uh, when he said, when he has tested me, I shall come forth or emerge as gold. That is something we really need to understand. For we are God's workmanship, and He does not make mistakes, by the way, and He's not going to make His work undone. Ah, excited ako dyan. And so this uh, August, September, we're looking at Emerge Victorious by looking at how Jesus Christ wants the seven churches in the book of Revelation to emerge from where they were uh, in the challenges and tribulations they were undergoing to becoming victorious during their time and so we started with the book uh, or with the church in Ephesus last week thank you Pastor George for preaching us about uh, you know putting back our first love uh, back where it should belong from the church of the church of Ephesus we're looking at the church of Smyrna today which is a second church so, as we look at the seven churches, before we go into our text, I, I want to uh, put up a chart here. There it is. And this chart is uh, the seven churches, okay, from Ephesus to Laodicea. And uh, there are many charts you could see in the in, uh, internet and uh, Google. But this one I like, and I titled the outline that Jesus would use for each letter with the five P words here in the letter red, no? Person, who is the title of Jesus Christ, who he is. Then the next is praise, what were they doing right? Then purge, what they need to repent from, stop doing, and get rid of. And then what the church uh, is uh, to pursue, and then the promise of Jesus, if they obey. There. All right. I'm not going to read through this chart. We don't have time. But I pray that you and your life group groups 
or your personal in your personal study download this chart and, and take a look at this for the next uh, two months okay now you will notice in this chart that uh, first there is the two blue sections and these two blue sections Smyrna and Philadelphia are the churches that do not have any uh, purge or condemnation they were doing what was right amidst their challenges then the rest of the five you would see the you know uh, descending of their uh, spiritual plights marked by the, the you know the increasing intensity of red and you would see from loss of first love so church of Ephesus it become more and more in red so that by uh, you know Laodicea they are no longer uh, you know the church God wants them to be in fact we find in Laodicea Jesus would say hey behold I stand at the door he's outside huh? <laughs> let me in see the church was going through the motion of church without Christ already and so you'd see this descending uh, intensity uh, of the red and so as we look through this we will find how and where our churches are today and how we can emerge from where we are to where God wants to be as victorious all right okay so today we're looking at the second church the church of Smyrna Smyrna will teach us about emerge something really really powerful okay so before i read through the text i want to say that i will read through the text and i will go through it with running commentaries all right and then we will learn the principles from the our reading let's pray first okay father i want to thank you for the freedom that we have to open the word of god wherever we are right now the amazing technology that we can be together even though physically uh, we are everywhere all over the globe, we are together now as your body. Uh, and as we study the word, we pray, I pray, Lord, you'll make the word to transform our lives, to send it for the purpose by which you want the word to impact our lives because the word of God is truly alive. And Lord, like it is a double-edged sword, Lord, wield it to my inner being that I may become all that you want me to be and the church may become all that you want her to be. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Revelations chapter 8, verse 8 to 11. Verse 8. And to the angel of the, of the church in Smyrna write, these things say the first and the last who was dead and came to life. Uh, first and the last is a title of Jesus Christ, twice mentioned in chapter 1 and twice mentioned in chapter 22. They're like the bookends of the book of Revelation. And this title, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, is, one, is probably the most powerful uh, image of God from God from heaven's point of view because from heaven's point of view you would see that uh, God is beyond the limitation of time of space uh, and he is he is all powerful all authority fully sovereignly totally in control of everything in all of creation and that's why he's beyond eternity past beyond eternity future the beginning and the la and, and the last the first and the last the alpha and the omega powerful and this is going to be a powerful title for the church in smyrna because that's the basis for explaining what they were going to go through well what were they going to go through uh, what were they going through verse 9 i know your works tribulation and poverty but you are rich and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a, a synagogue of Satan. Now, there's much to be said here, but the church in Ephesus was experiencing all kinds of 
tribulation like the rest of the other churches. And God is saying, I know that you, in spite of your service, you are also suffering from me. And you are suffering, uh, you know, uh, like you're poor. And that's really true because during that time, Christians were not given the opportunity to economically progress. They were ostracized from business. They were, uh, uh, th that's why they, they, they were poor. You know, they, they could not uh, get good jobs. They could not get promoted. Kasi nga, ostracized sila, especially by Rome. And so, God saying, even though you're poor, I, you're really rich. Uh, because of the, what, the way you're responding to all of this. So that's the first I know. I know your works. I know your tribulation. And then I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews. These are really, these are Jews, but they have, they have abandoned their Jewish tradition from, from you know, uh, with God as their Yahweh. They have focused on one thing, destroy Christianity. That's it. They exist to destroy Christianity. That's why Jesus would not uh, hesitate to call them a synagogue of Satan, no? Because that's what the devil does to destroy Christianity. And so, with Jesus saying, I know what you're doing, and I know you're really hanging on in there. Then this is what he says in verse 10. Do not fear any of those things which you're about to suffer. Oh, this is now looking into the future. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation in 10 days. Now, this is, you know, there's a lot here, but bear with me that Jesus is warning them there's more tribulation, tougher things is to come. And they will be thrown into prison, and they will be tested, and they will have tribulation for 10 days. Uh, 10 uh, in, in, in Jewish uh, numerology means many days, not literally 10 days, but many, many days. And exactly the, when we look at when we look back at history, this is what happened to them. I'll show you a picture here. What you see in the picture is a depiction of how Christians were thrown into lion's den, were you know wrapped with uh, animal skin and thrown to dogs, so they would be eaten alive. Huh? And they were burned, crucified, and in fact, their bodies were used as torch. No, they, they, they would put, uh, you know, uh, chemical in their bodies and burn them throughout the night to make them street lamps. This is how historians would depict the type of persecution that happened during the time of John and, and happened to the Christian church during the time. And in the midst of that, according to verse 10, now I want you to read this carefully with me because this is what we will focus on. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Wow. So this is what God wants. In verse 11, he closes, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So this is not only to the church in Smyrna, but to all the churches who are experiencing tribulation. He who overcomes shall not be hurt, by the second death. What does the church in Smyrna teach us today about emerge? Well, this is our lesson for the rest of this time. Amidst affliction, emerge faithful to the end. Let me repeat that. Amidst affliction, emerge faithful to the end. You know, this is a tough call because I can be faithful to the end, but amidst affliction, woo. And this can only happen if we take on to ourselves what I call the divine mindset. Okay, here, the divine mindset. What is the divine mindset? Well, Paul tells us about this in his writing in Philippians chapter 129. Listen to this verse carefully, okay? Paul writes, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, okay, but also to suffer for His sake. Wow. 
Paul is telling us that to suffer affliction for his sake is an honor and privilege. So amidst affliction, we are to emerge faithful to the end. Why? Because this is God's will. This is God wa what God wants. And he wants us to embrace this with gladness. That's the divine mindset. Let me ask you, do you find in your heart right now this same mindset? The church in Smyrna teaches us that emerging is a life of uh, requiring us to persevere through trials and tribulation to the end. To the end. You know, we've been talking about sufferings and persecutions, trials, afflictions, pain, loss, and all that comes with, you know, tribulations. Since the, even prior to the pandemic, diba? Right? And, you know, we know this, in this pandemic, we're not going to end in the normal that we used to know. We know that we're going to end in a new normal marked with greater challenges and difficulties and afflictions. Oh, nasan tayo ngayon? Nasa ECQ pa rin tayo? Sabi nga na, Pastor, Pastor, hindi naman to easy. It's hard. Na, it's really hard. It's coming to a point na para ang hirap na. Magdadalawang taon na tayo, no? And it's looking like it's going to be tougher ahead. And yet, our challenge for today is really timing. For you and me, amidst affliction, will I emerge faithful to the end? And we need to be able to say, yes, Lord. Here's the key, mga kapatid, ha? I believe that if we are able to take on the, the divine mindset and embrace afflictions, okay, with, with gladness and joy, with a welcoming, you know, spirit, that, my beloved, will be yours and my empowerment for us to emerge empowerment to enable us to be faithful to the end. So now for the rest of my time, I want to convince you and me huh, to embrace this divine mindset by looking at scriptures from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. Wow, tagal to. No, no, I'll just be quick. Read verses and then pull out principles. Okay? And from these eight Bible characters who experienced affliction or sought affliction, we will learn what afflictions meant to, to believers and to the kingdom of God. So we look at uh, three in the Old Testament and five in the New Testament. Okay. First, Noah. He had persecutions and mockings and afflictions. He was the first one. Why? Well, we find that he was asked by the Lord to build an ark for a hundred years. And during that hundred years, Scripture tells us what he was doing. Let me read 1 Peter 3, 20, and then 2 Peter 2, 5. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah. Why? Because he was waiting for them to believe. While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Skipping to chapter 2, verse uh, 2 Peter 2, 5. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, here it is, a preacher of righteousness and seven others. So what did Noah do during the time that they were preaching? Did they isolate themselves in the forest and build the ark? No, they were preaching. 
They were showing by their lives and telling them that God's judgment was about to come because of sin. And God patiently waited for people to believe, but only the eight were saved. But then, what do we find in that story? In that story, through Noah, affliction brings about global mission. Bakit global mission? The entire world heard about God's way of redemption, even though only eight believed. Noah, his sons and daughters, and his wife preached affliction caused them to, ito action point natin, when we have affliction, fulfill the mission. You ever thought about this? Ay, mga OFW dyan, lalo na, ha? O kaya, mga ilan sa atin, you were displaced, relocated, or, you know, something happened. Yung pala, kasi may mission ang Panginoon. You ever thought about that? You know, that God may have divinely displaced and dislocated you, huh? And that you're there where you are for the purpose that God wants to fulfill His mission through you. Wow! Yan ha? Mission ka God. Number two person, si Job. Okay, kilala natin siya. Well, we find this learning from him. Affliction brings about multiplied blessings. Yeah, of course, Job, the whole book about his affliction, right? But the last chapters is about who sent the afflictions. And in the very last chapter, Job worshipped God, recognized who God is, and acknowledged God, okay? So, let me read that portion in Job 42, uh, verse 12 and 13, 16 and 17. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, times four, huh? 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. 16 and 17. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. Job died with multiplied blessings. Why? Ito yung action point ni Job. Para sa atin din. Acknowledge God in our affliction. Acknowledge God. And that's what the friends of Job did not recognize. In the end, Job recognized that. He acknowledged God. And to him, multiplied blessings came. Third, Old Testament character is si David. From David, we learn this. Affliction brings about empowered obedience. Why? Why do we say that? Okay, let me do just a short Bible study here, okay? In Psalms 119, three verses, affliction is mentioned. Psalm 119, verse 67, 68, 71, and 75. Okay, let me just read this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. Verse 71, look, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Then verse 75, I know, Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness, you have afflicted me. Wow, did you see what the psalmist wrote here, what David wrote here? Now before, you know, he went astray. But through affliction, he, through, and he integrated uh, the reality of affliction in his life as something good. Because God is good. And then he said in the end, you know, it is you who afflicted me, Lord. Kaya sabi nyo, sa, kaya sabi ko, sarili ko, it's good for me that I've been afflicted because it's God who allowed affliction. So, affliction brought about empowered obedience kay David. And so, ang action point natin dito is integrate and learn. So, when afflictions come, welcome them as the opportunities for you 
to actually move forward spiritually, move upward in your journey with the Lord. Now, let's go to the New Testament. Five characters. Very familiar na sa atin to, okay? James, nabasa na natin to last time, but let me just say what we learned from him. Affliction brings about completed character. We read that in James chapter 1. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but that patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So James is saying, because he is completing your character, trust God and his ways. That's our action point. Trust God and his ways. All right. Ito, si Paul. Paul told us about sufferings kanina. It's a, it's a privilege. But also, he mentions about this process in Romans 5. Through Paul, we learn this. Affliction brings about sure hope. Where do we learn that? Romans 5, verse 3 and onwards. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character what? Hope. So he repeats what James says, and then he says, hope. And verse 5, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So Paul was assuring us because the Holy Spirit, by his love, was poured into our hearts, then the hope is sure. What is the hope? That we will be completed. That someday when we face the Lord, he will... We will be like him as what we've learned before, right? And so we glory in the tribulations. We, we allow the affliction to increase and strengthen our hope. And what is Paul telling us? Therefore, hang on. Never give up. Hang on. When I was in college, I learned that if you are at the ends of your rope, wala ka na, na? your ends of your rope, hang on. I don't know how to hang on. Well, tie a knot, sabi nga, no? Para may makakapitan ka, hang on. And what is that knot? The promise of hope. The promise of hope. Hang on. Okay? So, tribulation brings us hope. Sa totoo lang. The next section, I have, I have to explain. Barnabas. Why Barnabas? Well, from Barnabas, we learn affliction brings about Enduring to the end. Where do we learn that? From the book of Hebrews. Why Barnabas? Well, I happen to believe that it's Barnabas who wrote the book of Hebrews. Let's just have a you know, discussion on that later on. But if Barnabas wrote Hebrews, this is what he wrote about, the, about persecution. In chapter 11 is the hall of faith, diba? Right? And then I'll catch it from verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephna, also of David and Samuel and the prophets. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still, others had a trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two and were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They, were, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves on the earth. Then verse 12, verse 1, here it is. Huh? Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, yung mga na-mention niya, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily en ensnares us, here it is, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Well, the Hebrew writer is telling us that because those in the past run with endurance, you know, uh, run to the end with faithfulness, becoming martyrs, being willing to, 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 to die, you know, uh, then we can run the same race with endurance. 
the race that is set before us. So, as we find that affliction brings about enduring to the end, our action point, finish the race. Finish the race. So when we are afflicted, look at the finish line. Keep on. Peter, ito, nabas, na, alam na rin natin to, but I'll include him. Affliction brings about proven faith. Obvious to sa text niya. Uh, 1 Peter 1. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, there it is, that the genuineness of your faith, proven faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So here, Peter is telling us, your faith is being proven through a process. So an action point, undergo the process, like go through fire, being purified. Be willing to undergo the process of purification, of being proven in your faith and faithfulness. All right? Pinakahuli, Revelation. No? Ah, si John wrote Revelation. Affliction brings about the crown of life. Uh, we read this a, a while back, kanina. Let me read it again. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. So affliction brings about the crown of life if ano yung action point natin? Dapat tayo loyal to the end. There you go. Loyal to the end. Wow! From Noah to John, from Genesis to Revelation, the blessings of tribulation from God, no? from Genesis to Revelation, teaches us, beloved, there is no way through the Christian life, without going through affliction, trials, testings, tribulations. These are not setbacks. They are divine setups, as I mentioned. Like what the psalmist again wrote, no? It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Do you have that divine mindset? I know that your judgments are right and in faithfulness you have afflicted me. And if you know that God is the one who is sending and allowing the difficulty, welcome them with gladness because through affliction, God blesses our lives, fulfills and completes the work multiplies our resources, strengthens our endurance, and causes us to experience Him more than ever. Well, I'd like to just end by reviewing for us our action points. When God sends us affliction, what do we do? Well, from Noah, we learn, fulfill the mission. From Job, acknowledge God. David, integrate and learn. From James, trust God and his ways. From Paul, hang on. From Barnabas, finish the race. From Peter, undergo the process. And then from John, loyal to the end. And all of this is spelling for us today. When there is affliction, we are to be what? There. Faithful to the end. Beloved, let us be, as the church in Smyrna teaches us, faithful to the end. Father, thank you for teaching us through the word. I ask you, Lord, by the Holy Spirit you sent into my heart, give me the strength and the mind 
and the joy to be able to live amidst tribulations and affliction and be faithful to the end. I start with this, Lord. Whatever I am going through right now, the difficulties and trials I am undergoing, the pain that I may be experiencing, the loss, the confusion, the difficulties, and the challenge. Thank you. From you, you will fulfill what is best. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Maraming salamat po, Pastor Phil, sa napapanahong mensahe mula sa salita ng Diyos na inyo pong ibinahagi sa amen that indeed, we must stay faithful even though there are many afflictions in life, particularly ngayong pandemic. As the chorus of our response song says, When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still. No, you are God. Yes, we can be calm as we know who our God is in our lives. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you because indeed you are faithful and you will remain faithful. You are our unchanging God. You are who you are, even before the beginning of time, from eternity to eternity. Our afflictions are known to you, Father. Nothing is hidden to you. You even feel us and all our afflictions in life. You hear the cry of your children and of your people whom you allowed to experience the impact of this COVID virus. In your presence, Lord, there is peace. 
and calmness. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, now to Him who is able to do more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within you, to Him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before His glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God! Purihin po ang Panginoon! Mga kapatid, please take note of some of our ministries this coming week. And you may even visit rooms or messenger rooms prepared by our pastors for some kumustahan and prayer time. We are there waiting po para po sa inyo to pray for you and to hear some news from you. Muli po, magpalain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoon. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat.